Hey, this is Mr. Mola for Lesson 4-5, Analyzing Lines of Fit. So in Lesson 4-4, we found lines of fit. We're going to do a little bit of the same, but more now we're going to look at the lines of fit and see what they mean. So for Exploration 1 here, the scatter plot shows the median ages of women at their first marriage for selected years from 1960 to 2010. In Exploration 2, in Section 4.4, you approximate the line of fit graphically. To find the line of best fit, you can use a computer spreadsheet graphing calculator, like I taught you before, that has a linear regression feature. All right, so A, the data from the table or from the scatter plot is shown in the table. Note that 0, 5, and 10, and so on, represent the number of years since 1960. What does the order pair 25 and, and 23.3 represent? So if it says 0, 5, and 10, represent the number of years since 1960. So that means zero years after 1960, five years after 1960, so 1965, 10 years after 1960, so 1970. They're asking about all the way down here at 25. So if this is 1960, that's 1965, that's 1970, that's 1975, that's 1980, that would be 1985. So it represents the year 1985. So in 1985, and then here, the Y column represents the median age. So in 1985, the median age for marriage was 23.3 years old. Okay, so we're just reading the graph, reading the table, kind of see what it says. B, it says use linear regression feature to find an equation of the line to best fit. You should attain results that look like these. So here they already did it for us, so we don't need to put it in our calculator. We'll save that for another problem. So y equals, and they gave us a is 0.126, and let's just round that to 0.13x. And then they gave us our b is 19.8. So there we go. So if we wanted to figure out, you know, how many years past 1960, we can put that number in here, times it by 0.13, add it to 19.8, and we could figure out um, what the average age, or what the median age was. Okay, here on number three, it says the data set relates the number of chirps per second for the striped ground crickets and the outside temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Make a scatter plot of the data. We're not going to do that. We'll just put it in our calculators. Then find the equation for the line that best fits. Okay. And then we need to find out how many chirps there's going to be. Um, or find, use your result to estimate the outside temperature when there's 19 chirps per second. Okay. So here we need to get our calculator. So it's still in Schoology here for us. And we're going to put in that table. And this is kind of confusing. It took me a second to kind of look at this. This is really just one long table. There's five numbers here and five numbers here. Um, it should, should be one long table of 10. So I don't know if they ran out of room on the page or couldn't do 10 boxes, but this is really just one long table here. So when we put it in the calculator, if you're wondering where I'm getting the numbers, I'll put in these top numbers as my x's and then those bottom numbers as my y's. So remember, we're going to go to list enter and we're going to put in those numbers so we got 20 and then 16 and then 19.8 and then 18.4 17.1 14.7 now i started the second list there 15.4 16.2 17.1 all right, I'm going to go do the Y's over here. So 88.6, 71.6, 93.3, 93.3, 84.3, 80.6, 69.7, 69 69.4, 83.3, 79.6, and 76.3. All right, so now my list is in. Remember, we're going to hit the stat button again, slide over to calc, and then go down to linear regression. 
Yes, my x's are my L1's, my y's are my L2's. I want them to calculate. And we get 3.27 as my slope. So let's round that to 3.3. .3. So y equals 3.3x. .3 and then plus about 24.9. Let's just say plus 25 there. Okay, so that means as long as the temperature was 25 degrees, you can kind of put that in there. Um, and that would figure it out for us. So then if we wanted to figure out how many chirps there are for 19 sec 19 per second, what the temperature would be. So then I'm going to put 19 in for my x. So 3.3 .3 times 19 plus 25 is going to give us 3.3 .3 times 19 is 62.7 plus 25. That's going to equal 87.7 degrees. So if you hear a, this kind of cricket chirping 19 times in a minute, that means it's about 87.7 degrees outside. All right, then we got a couple of problems that are asking, is this a good line of fit? Okay, so they give us a table here. So in exercise one and two, the residual to determine whether the model is a good fit for the table, explain. So they say y equals negative 3x plus 2. So for this first one, uh, I'm going to put it back in the calculator and kind of see what we get. If we get something close, then we'll say yes, it's a good example, um, or no, it's not. So let me go back in. Oops, clear my whole list. Clear my x's too. All right, so I'm just going to put in that list of numbers there. So my x is negative 4. Whoops. negative 4, not minus 4, otherwise we're going to get an error there. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we got 13, whoops, and then 11, and then 8, and then 6, and then 3, and then 0, and then negative 4, negative 8, and negative 10. Okay, so my list is all done. Slide over to calc, linear regression. I want to calculate, and it tells me it's negative 2.999, or 9.83333, and then B is plus 2.11. So y equals negative 2.98 plus 2.111. So I would say negative 3x plus 2 is pretty close to that. So I would say then, yes, this is a good fit for that. Negative 3x plus 2 is very close to negative 2.98 plus 2.11. All right, and then same thing here. So they want to see if this is a good fit. So negative 0.5x plus 1. So let's go back and put that in our calculator. Clear this list. All right, so we got zero, one, two, three, four, five, whoops, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we got two, zero, negative three, negative five, negative seven negative 6, negative 4, negative 3, and negative 1. All right, let's look at this. Slide over to calc. Calculate, and we get negative 0.4 minus 1.4. So y equals negative 0.4x minus 1.4. So we got negative 0.5x, negative 0.4x. Those are pretty good, uh, but here's where it's kind of off by a lot. We got a plus 1 in the problem and a negative 1.4 in the answer. So they're off by about 2.5. I would say that's a pretty big difference, especially when we're dealing with numbers so low. Maybe if we were dealing with numbers like in the thousands, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But to be off by negative, or to be off by 2.5 when you're talking about numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, that's kind of a big deal to be off by that much. So I would say this is not 
y equals negative 0.5x plus 1 is not a good equation for this line. It should be maybe if it was minus 1, it'd be a little better, but to have the plus 1 isn't very good. All right, last one here. So the table shows the number of visitors y to a particular beach for the da daily average temperature. Use the graphing calculator to find the equation for the line of fit and then plot the data. All right, so here's another one. Uh, great real life example, if you own a restaurant, when are people coming to your restaurant? Here it's when are people going to the beach? Um, so you can kind of figure out based on the temperature when people are going to the beach. Um, not gonna go to, be going to the beach when it's 30 degrees outside obviously, but maybe there's a better correlation there of well, once it hits like 85 degrees, then a lot more people start going to the beach or maybe it's 90 degrees. So if you're planning on, you know, having a business or something, it's important to look when you need to look at these things, especially if you're doing something with like food because, you know, food goes bad. So if you don't sell it, then you kind of have to throw it away and that's lost product. Um, something like t-shirts and stuff like that isn't really going to go bad, but you probably don't want a whole lot of inventory um, and not being able to sell stuff because that's going to cost money to buy it. And then if you can't sell it, you're just losing money there. But especially with food, that's always tough to, if you own a restaurant, because you kind of need to use that food up right away. Otherwise, it's going to go bad. All right, so putting these in here, let's see if there's a formula that we can use to predict how many people are coming to the beach. All right. Whoa, so we got 23.57, and then our B is negative 1,798. So that seems really weird. All right, so let's write that down. So Y equals, it was about, let's see, where was it again? Uh, 23.5. And then minus about 1795. All right, so let's kind of see if that really works. So if I put in, you know, let's say 100 there. So let's clear it. So it was 23.5. Let's do times 100. And then if I subtract the 1795, so that seems about right. We'd have about 555 people there um, if it was 100 degrees outside, which when it's pretty that when it's that hot you're probably going to have somewhere around there um, let's look at how far off we were on when it was 90 degrees outside so 90 degrees minus the 1795 so about 320 which isn't bad because then the problem said when it's 90 degrees you'd be at about 350 so you're off about 30 people so identify and interpret the correlation so i'd say the hotter it is the more people are at the beach So again, great real life example um, of how we would use this, especially if you have your own business. Um, you're going to want to see how many people are going to be coming to your store or coming to wherever. Um, and there's probably some kind of data you can use to figure that out with temperature or, you know, even I'm sure you can do like days of the week where Mondays this many people come, Tuesdays this many people come and can kind of figure out the correlation there of when are going to be your busiest days and when are going to be your not busy days. So, all right. Hope that helped.